And welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal here with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show, the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. Another perhaps pivotal week. Let's take a look. First up, we are, as usual, going to take a look at the broader markets and see where we closed the week. First up, as usual, we will take a look at the markets. Where did we close this week? Also from there, some of those top headline news that drove price action this week. Also gaps up and what to expect beyond those gaps up. We are seeing an inordinate number of stocks that are gapping up after reporting their earnings. So I will share you cur- uh, with you current examples. Also, we'll take a look at a couple of names that have experienced this over the past several weeks to give you that pre- precedence and a sense of how to handle that stock. And then also most telling earnings reports this week. Yes, earnings were a primary driver for a number of stocks and a number of areas despite other outside headline news. And I will share with you those names that from my work are what I'm calling the most telling so that we can then expect continuation rallies in that industry group. Also, base breakouts and new highs. I talked about this last week. We are seeing a continuation there despite a rather flat close for the markets. We'll take a look at some of those stocks. So here we are with the news headlines for the week. The beginning of the week, we did see job openings drop, hiring was slowing, and that was generally good news. We want to see the economy slow down a bit so that the Federal Reserve cannot be quite as aggressive in their monetary policy stance. We did see construction spending. It fell pretty sharply, as you can imagine, housing demand dropping here as interest rates were on the rise. We also saw factory orders rise 2% in June. That was pretty strong. Overall, it was a mixed week for the economic data. However, the ever important report today was what everyone was anticipating. Jobless claims did stay at a nine-month high, no big surprise there. However, today's number really was something that certainly rattled the markets. We did see July's unemployment rate fell to pre-pandemic levels, not what we ideally want to see, again, relating to the possible response from the Federal Reserve. Ideally, we want that unemployment rate to stay high and to get to a level that's below the pandemic is not Uh, way that we want. So we'll see. I'll take a look and share with you some of the responses to that that were experienced today in response, and it will make sense. Also, next week, we are going to get other very impactful data as it relates to the Federal Reserve and their potential policy interest rate rising or lowering going into, actually, there will not be any lowering of interest rates, but just how much will they rise at their next meeting. So we do have core CPI, that's consumer price index, that's a highly watched inflation gauge by the Federal Reserve, producer price index, another inflation number, and then also consumer sentiment next week. And each of these are reports that the Fed has mentioned that they are utilizing and paying close attention to in order to draw conclusions going into that next monthly meeting. So from here, let's take a look at the S&P 500. We want to see where we stand. We're looking at a daily price chart and we can see the S&P was a bit of a volatile period. However, net net, we are closing flat for the week. This is being recorded just before the close. So unless we get some sort of big advance uh, into Friday's close, I'm anticipating that we are going to end the week flat. Of importance here is this near-term area of possible upside resistance. And it's taking us back to the very beginning of June. This was a period of consolidation and the highs from that June consolidation period are this near-term area of resistance. And you can see we were very close on Wednesday 
to getting above that area. And then hence, since then we have pulled back. So this is going to be a key area. A lot of technicians and investors keeping a close eye on this. Ideally, at some point, we would like to see a break above this level on heavy volume. So we are still at this gateway, if I may. Outside momentum indicators, we can see the RSI positive, trending sideways at this juncture in line with the markets. Stochastics are also up here in positive territory. I love above this 50 midpoint level and in positive territory as well. So despite today's news being not what investors anticipated, it was a rather tempered overall response, but there were some areas that did get hit more than others. And we'll take a look at that in the case we get a continuation of the current dynamics. So from here, let's go ahead and drill down further. We're going to take a look at those 11 sectors that are underlying the S&P 500. What I've done here is added an RSI, that's a relative strength indicator. And we want to see where the relative strength is at this point in time. And then also equally important is being on the prowl for potential sector rotation. And this is something that you can execute certainly on your own on a regular basis. But here we are at the end of the week. And let's take a look. I will tell you technology up here at the forefront. And this was the top performing industry group. I'll share with you where the strength is taking place there and why. And then also we can see industrials up here at the forefront. And really, to reveal both of these areas have had stocks within their groupings that have really put out some very, very strong numbers. So it is earnings driven primarily. And let's go ahead and move on because utilities up here at the forefront, one would think that is defensive. Normally they are because they offer a high yield, uh, very stable uh, most of the time, but they are up here at the forefront also all about earnings. These companies have been able to raise their rates to customers and keep their growth intact. So let's go ahead and move on further because in consumer discretionary outperformed the S&P 500 this week. And a lot of that has to do with Amazon. Tesla was no help at the end of the day, but Amazon had a nice strong week. And then other sub industry groups in the retail space, all about earnings coming in with numbers ahead of estimates, gaps up. So we'll get into that. Also, let's go ahead and move down. We want to make sure that you're aware of areas that are underperforming. I will pull up the chart here for energy, XLE. Pretty significant drop here. It is poised to be down over 6% for the week. A couple of factors at play here. We'll take a look at the price of oil. Also, OPEC had their meeting on Wednesday, and they did decide to increase output of oil going into September. But really most important with XLE, in addition to that price of oil, is the fear of a slowdown, economic slowdown globally, that will in turn potentially reduce oil demand. So let's take a look at another sub-industry grouping here that is kind of middling, but perking up a little. This is financial XLF ETF. And I'll share with you in this next segment, a sub-industry group here that is picking up, and we'll talk about why. So let's go ahead and dig right in. Next up are these other sub-industry groups outside of those broader sectors. And these are ETFs that certainly from my work, I find really powerful as far as identifying leadership. I do focus on on growth, but when growth is not working, I am not against looking at other areas. So let's take a look at, again, this two-month daily price chart view. I've added that relative strength indicator, and here we are up at the forefront. If I sound excited, it's because this is the biotechnology ETF, IB. B. This is a group that I added to the MEM Edge report. It's a biweekly report that I produce. It was one of the first, I would say, out of the gate 
areas that did reverse their downtrend. We added the ETF here. However, it did go on to underperform for about three weeks. And this three-week period was when growth stocks really came into favor. Everyone forgot about biotechs. And in my report last Sunday, I suggested that we could see a nice re-energizing taking place here because a number of the top holdings in IBB were due to report their earnings this week and things were looking good. And in fact, we did get nice numbers. I'll share with you some of those heavier weight names, but more importantly, as it broke above this July, early July high, IBB did break out into a buy zone. Next area here, upside resistance is this 200 day simple moving average of note is the fact that it is not just heavyweight names that are popping all over the place. Biotech over 500 stocks in this grouping. And uh, if we have time, I'll share with you the weekly returns and you'll see a number of outperformers in this area. So let's move on from here. Semiconductors. This is a grouping, of course, in technology. And this is one of the areas that did help technology outperform. They were up almost 3% for the week. A lot going on here relating to earnings as well and areas that I do have two semiconductor stocks on my MEM Edge suggested holdings list, outperformers, of course, and looking for a continuation rally in that area, depending on how things pan out. Because another area that also outperformed within tech this week are software stocks. This is IGV ETF up over 3%. Again, all about earnings. And I will get into some of those numbers, but we want to see ideally growth continue to participate to help with that continued broadening out. But next up, I will share with you an area that could potentially put the brakes on this move into growth. And that is a chart, daily chart of the yield for the 10 year treasury. And we can see a nice declining phase here in interest rates. And I say nice because lowered rates, a decline in these rates is good for growth stocks. In other words, the future value of growth in earnings and sales is now not reduced. When interest rates are on the rise, those future earner earnings are valued at a lower level. So this week we did see an uptick here. So we're going to keep a close eye on this. This is all about certainly today's uptick, the anticipation with unemployment at pre-pandemic levels, anticipation that the Fed may get a little more aggressive in their raising of the Fed funds rate and in turn impact these rates. So one area I would urge you to keep your eye on. However, there is one group that can fare well in a rising interest rate environment, and that is banking. This is KRE, the regional banking ETF. These guys, some of them are also coming out with strong numbers. So you have a couple of dynamics at play there. The names that I follow are larger. They're not quite ready for prime time. There is, seems to be more upside in other areas. So I do have a watch list, but not quite ready for prime time yet. Let's take a look at Brent crude oil. I talked about energy declining this week. And here we are really to see energy get here below that $100 mark. It's closing the week at about $94 per barrel. And you can see historically that we would have to go back quite a bit here to see energy prices or oil at that low of a level. And in turn, energy stocks were hit this week. So also one last area, let's take a look at volatility because rising volatility is not good for the markets. This is also known as the fear index. And we can see that volatility dipped despite today and the pullback that we've experienced. That is good news. We want volatility to be at a more reduced level. This 200-day moving average is a critical area for volatility as it trades below that. Generally, it is good for the market. So I did want to go ahead and point that out. So from here, lots of other areas that I do want to cover with you. I talked about gaps up. 
and what that can mean for your stock. So first up, I'll share with you some of the names this week that did gap up in price. Usually it is going to be in response to earnings. We'll take a look at a couple of these names here. And also I'll share with you what industry group they are a part of. So here we are with EPAM gapping up on strong earnings. And you can do the same here. If you pull up the full quote when looking at a stock, you'll get quite a bit more in the way of information. You will get their weekly price range, but also that sub industry group that they're a part of. EPAM is a software stock, back office related. And here we are with that gap up. The company reported numbers that were 39% above estimates. And I'm going to share with you one of the more powerful price formations that can take shape after a gap up on earnings and some of the other criteria that you will want to see to guide you and give you a sense that there is further upside. So first up is the fact that EPAM on this gap up, it gapped up into a base breakout that can be one of the more powerful price formations as it relates to being pushed higher out of there. Another factor you want to take care and look at is this volume. It's not as easy to see here, but yesterday's gap up was on above average volume. Make sure your outside momentum indicators are in positive territory. At this juncture, we are maybe taking a pause here at that 200 day moving average, which is at 425. We can see we're just dipping above that. So that's good news for a potential continuation rally. And then of course, the gap up out of a base occurred on strong earnings. So lots of good factors in play there. Let's take a look at another company that reported this week also in the software space. This is Ceridian and it is CDAY. And we can see another, it's not quite a base breakout yet. We will want to get up above this 70 level, but nice high volume characteristics. And then your outside momentum indicators are positive. So we can take a look at one other name. And from here, I will go ahead and share with you stocks that have had these gaps up and prior over the last couple of weeks and what to be on the lookout for for these near-term gaps up. So here we are with QSR, Restaurant Brands International. And you can see the gap up of note for me is the continued high volume characteristics. The stock is under accumulation. We can see that it is a bit overbought with this RSI above 70. However, for those of you that are invested and you want to take a look at the super near-term view, it can provide you with further intel. So here we are with QSR on a 15-minute chart, super near-term, but it can provide guidance because oftentimes on the open, you will get this big gap up and there will be a need to digest that gap up in the sense that it could potentially trade sideways, but as long as it stays a above this five and 13 simple moving average, you're in good standing. This is your MACD. You will oftentimes see the MACD trend downward. It is not a sell signal. Quite simply, it's telling you that this very powerful upshift is consolidating. So both momentum indicators in positive territory, super near term, things do look constructive for QSR. One other view we'll take a quick look at here is a uh, it's still near term, but not quite as near term. This is the one hour price chart and uh, similar dynamics at play as it finds support above the simple five and 13 hour moving average. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other areas, these names that have gapped up and what to be on the lookout for. So this is Celsius. Many of you may know that they have, are in a partnership with Pepsi. Very bullish news for an already uptrending stock. We can see these nice high volume characteristics. And oftentimes, I'll share with you other examples, but when a stock gets moving, and certainly market dynamics will be at play as well. But if you can capture the name on a pullback, in this case, to the 10-day simple moving average that can oftentimes be a very ideal buy point as the stock continues 
to remain in an uptrend because it's above that shorter term moving average. Let's take a look at another stock that did gap up. And this is MPWR. And I'm going to pull up a five day simple moving average when these names really get going. This will be what you want to be on the lookout for. And really, I'm, I don't like this example, so I will pull up another name because uh, now this is fantastic price action on MPWR. Near term upside still looks quite possible. And I can just take a minute while we're here to drill down to that one hour to give you a sense of once you have that gap up, how you can tell that it is still in good standing. So here's that gap up on earnings. And as long as we remain above these shorter term moving averages, you are fine. And the stock does potentially have further upside. But as it relates to what normally occurs after these gaps up, this would be a better example. This is WWE World Wrestling. And they came out with some news last week. We can see this gap up very big volume. And oftentimes you will see a pullback to that 10 day simple moving average, very similar to C uh, E L H, which we looked at earlier. And that can oftentimes be an ideal buy point for the stock. So from here, I did mention to you, and I already have shared some of those names, stocks that I would suggest their earnings reports can really be impactful beyond just there, that particular stock. We did talk about a couple of software names, but let's look at a couple of names that report it today. And here we are with Cloudflare. So what we had occur were some of the other names that I already reviewed, EPAM, CDAY, come out with numbers, investors got excited, and they bid up these other well-known companies due to report today prior to their release. So positive price action going into the report. And here we are with Cloudflare up quite a bit today, 28%, but a big gap up, tremendous volume. So not only the magnitude of that price percent change, but also the very high volume. Let's take a look at another widely followed software, well-known uh, name that was a big winner in prior years. And that is Atlas, Atlassian. This is T-E-A-M. And we can see another pretty extensive move. It's up 16% in an otherwise difficult period. Gap up huge volume. The point here is that these names, let's go ahead and pull up a weekly so I can share with you the dynamic. This is a stock that we've had on my MEM Edge report at various times. Certainly this period as it broke out of this base and entered into a nice uptrend. So I am going to keep these names on my radar so that when they come out and there is quite a bit of institutional or otherwise investor interest, it's going to capture my attention so that we can be on a potential continuation rally with software stocks. IGV is the one ETF that I follow. And again, those of you who have not already, I urge you to use that link below, trial my MEM Edge report. I do have a top performing software stock on there. I'm trying to keep my list very, very select where it is participating in these groups that are on the move, but not a lot of names so that you can participate and not spread too thin as it relates to your holdings. This is one of the names on my MEM Edge report that we picked up back here prior to this move. And this is another area that's on the move. This is on phase energy and lots taking place here, certainly relative to Alternative Energy, this is Invesco Solar ETF, T-A-N, and here's I-C-L-N, gap up, big volume. So in addition to the bill, Biden's latest bill that may be even closer, I understand it is now going to the Senate, and it is earmarking a record number of or amount in the way of funding for clean energy. So it, you will see a nice continuation rally in these global clean energy stocks. 
But equally as important is the fact that they are coming out with strong numbers, ENPH, 100% year-over-year -year earnings growth, management guiding higher well into next year. So you want that double dynamic, not just the potential for a bill to pass, but is the company reporting strong earnings? Are their growth prospects strong? So let's take a look at some of those base breakouts here. And I will share with you some of these stocks. I wanna make sure I have the right ticker symbol here because it is in line with that move that I talked about in industrials. And this is aerospace defense, HEIKO, H-E-I, and it did have this super advance here responding to numbers. And then this action after this big, in fact, this was a little bit of a gap up into a base breakout. This is another phenom or price action that will oftentimes occur after that. And that is this back and fill price formation as it consolidates after that very healthy two day rally in HEI. I want to see if I have other names here that are uh, worth noting. Yes, this is Huntington Ingalls, HII, another industrial name, and it did have a gap up into a base breakout, consolidating a bit, but very strong price action there. Yet another area that I wanted to share with you that is experiencing accumulation, but they are more in the way of downtrend reversals, and that is these steel stocks, NUE, they have been coming out with very robust numbers. The price of steel is double pre-pandemic levels. So it's another area, NUE also opening new facilities and actually hiring, unlike a lot of companies that are reducing their staff. This is Steel Dynamics, STLD, again, in the throes of reversing this downtrend. So I would keep an eye on that particular area. And I did talk about IBB. Let's take a look at two of the heavyweight names in this ETF that came out with numbers. The first one is the heaviest weighting. And you want to be aware of that if you are going to invest in an ETF. Know those bigger holdings. Are they in strong standing? And here we are. This is Repligen, R-G-E-N. Had a gap up here on earnings and a nice continuation rally. Another big holding here for IBB is Vertex. They came out with super strong numbers. Here we are trying to reverse this downtrend, but it's up 5% on a day that is not particularly good for the broader markets. A little more work needs to be done here with Vertex. I'm going to be on the lookout for this black line to cross up through the red, telling me that this downtrend has actually reversed. But we are getting nice volume as Vertex breaks above these moving averages, and your RSI is heading upward and in positive territory. So lots more I'm going to be covering in my Sunday report. You will want to have that at your fingertips. We're going to talk about the intermediate term prospects for the markets and other rotation that could conceivably take place in the face of today's high unemployment or actually low unemployment number. Everybody have a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you here next Friday afternoon. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.